I suppose there's only one way to find out. What are you doing? We're gonna call that number. And we're going to find out who the hell sent you that letter. But we're doing it my way. If I was to ask you what you loved about the recent season of Stranger Things, you'd probably tell me you loved the charming and relatable characters, the 80s nostalgia and aesthetics, the sci-fi horror mystery, the music, the list goes on. The show isn't short of elements that make it unique and enjoyable to watch. But what hit me the most whilst watching season 4 for the second time around was the way the Duffer Brothers, the duo behind the success of the show, managed to craft a long and ambitious plot into a season which felt surprisingly focused. I was trying to figure out how I managed to binge through 13 hours of a show in such a short amount of time without ever getting bored and always being immersed. This is how Stranger Things keeps you hooked. Got me stressed out, it's not even my girlfriend. What you just saw was an editing technique called a J-cut. You may not have even noticed it, but J-cut involves playing the audio from the next scene towards the end of the current scene before the audience gets a visual reference of where the sound is coming from. So for this example, we hear the sound of people roller skating to music, Argyle then goes to hit the golf ball, then we cut to people roller skating, and the audio continues. This is just one of the many editing and sound design techniques that the Duffer Brothers use throughout the season. It's a small thing, but it can make a big difference to the viewer's experience, especially when we're talking about a show with so many different plots and characters. You can break down this season of Stranger Things into four movies. Those four movies being The Prison Break in Russia, the stoner comedy with Argyle, the nightmare on Elm Street horror, and the sci-fi backstory with Eleven. These four movies have vastly different pacing, tone, genre, and characters, so constantly switching between them would feel extremely overwhelming. This is where the editing and sound design become such an important part of the show's success. The j Cart example I just showed was from a scene in episode two. The episode is 77 minutes long, and if we actually take a closer look at that episode, and count the number of times we cut to a different location or plot, we get 34 cuts. Of those 34 cuts, 10 of them are standard cuts with no obvious effect in place. Notifying the family. 13 of the cuts happen with a loud noise before or after cutting. Yes! There are seven match cuts which involve seamless transitions. And there are four cuts where there is both a loud noise and a transitional effect. These kind of numbers are consistent throughout each episode and it's the kind of thing which has to be written into the script before filming in order to plan and execute the transition. This consistent emphasis the Duffer Brothers place on editing with an impact just goes to show how important it is to the fluidity and immersion of the show. Whether you notice the J-cut or not, it will still have an effect on your viewing experience. Without even knowing, you switch your attention onto the next scene. The episode's pacing doesn't feel like it keeps stopping and starting with the constant switching of plots. Instead, each scene flows naturally onto the next, without letting the audience rest at any point. Each cut throughout the season is motivated by an action. Cuts happen with something as simple as the opening and closing of a door. Okay. Everything is designed to keep the energy of the episodes up and to keep the audience's attention. Again, we see it with the frequent use of close-ups when cutting. Take this transition. Notice how much more attention grabbing it is when we focus right in on an object, compared to my edit where I removed the close-up shot. Taking five. You just took five. The close-up forces your eyes directly onto something, rather than letting them rest. It keeps the viewer actively watching rather than just observing a surrounding. It's through transitions that the show can feel so much more connected. And sometimes we don't even need to cut. Instead, when characters are in the same location, we hold a long shot and do a subtle switch of perspectives. It allows the show to never feel like four separate movies meshed together. Each storyline feels like it's a continuation of the last. I don't know about you, but I feel much more in tune with these plots. Then say these ones. I could have done a thing like this. It's the kind of editing style which suits a show like Stranger Things, where the overarching story is about two worlds colliding and leaking into one another. We feel like our characters are never far from danger. Every scene is meant to rinse out every ounce of tension possible from the audience. Noises throughout the scene will be turned up and altered from the normal sound in order to give the show a more eerie and unsettling atmosphere, like the sound of a lighter. 
or someone pulling a cover off a boat. The same thing also happens in the transitions. Cutting either side of a loud noise acts as an almost wake-up call for the audience, to keep them paying attention. So having the heightened sound of a car driving by, or someone bouncing a basketball in front of the screen, can keep the viewer engaged and on the edge of their seat. The focus on editing and sound design means there's never a boring moment. There's never a moment to rest, and there's never a moment where we aren't scared for the characters. That's how Stranger Things keeps you hooked. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you do, feel free to like and subscribe. So uh, yeah, have a good one.